This is the second lesson, lesson on the lighthouse. So English for years five and six and summer weeks one and two. The aim of this unit is to write a narrative. That's a story based on the video of the lighthouse. And you can find that video on the Literacy Shed website. Or if you Google the lighthouse Literacy Shed, you can come up with a copy of the video. There's a few places you can find it just like to credit the Literacy Shed for the use of this lesson. And um, we're also, while we're writing our story, going to be focusing on the use of relative clauses in our sentences, as well as writing in the first person, that's I, and the third person, he, she, and it. So the objective for this lesson is to write an opening to a narrative. So I'd like you to be able to do that and include a description of a setting in the opening and even combine this with information about the life of a character in your opening paragraph. The basic structure of a story mountain is the five parts to the story. So the opening, the beginning, the build up, the problem, the resolution and the ending. This lesson focuses on the opening and we need to remember the purpose for the opening is to set the scene and describe the setting and to introduce the main character. So when we're writing today we need to hold that purpose in the back of our minds and that's what we want to focus on. It's worth noting that this lesson actually might take you two days or more to complete. Um, don't worry if that's the case, there's lots of background thinking and build up that needs to be done before you can start writing. So we're going to begin by gathering ideas, which we could use in our opening paragraph to help us retell the story. In order to do that, you're going to need to watch the beginning of the video clip. And as I said earlier, you can find it here. Hopefully, if you click on the link in the video, it will work. But if it doesn't, you can copy the link into your browser. Or like I said earlier, you can Google the Lighthouse Literacy Shed and it should come up for you. It's important to note as we're only watching the beginning because we're writing the beginning of our story. So you only want to watch up until the first 40 seconds. Before you click on the link and find the video, I want you to consider when you're watching it, what did you notice about the setting? And what did you notice about the man? We're going to be taking notes and using those to help our ideas. So you can find the video, watch the video please, up until the first 40 seconds and pause this presentation while you do that. Once you've watched the first 40 seconds for the first time, please come back to the presentation. So now hopefully you've watched the video and we're going to gather some ideas for both of those points, for the lighthouse keeper and the setting. You may find it helpful to keep re-watching the film clip again and stopping every few seconds whilst you gather your information and record it down. Just remind you though that you only need to keep watching up to 40 seconds at this point. There are many ways you can record your ideas, but I'd like you to consider using a table. So if you draw a table in your book or on your piece of paper to collect your initial ideas, you'd need two columns because we're collecting ideas about the lighthouse keeper and the setting. So the first column you need to label lighthouse keeper and the second the setting. So your table would look similar to this example here. Once you've done that, pause this presentation again and go and rewatch the video a few times, pausing every few seconds if you need to, up until 40 seconds to record your information in your table. Then when you're ready, you can resume this presentation. So having watched your video clip a few times, you're going to have gathered some information. Now there's lots of things you could say, so you might have my ideas, but they might be extra, so you can feel free to add to yours as you watch this, but also if you've got extra information, that's okay. So the kind of information you might have gathered about the lighthouse keeper. You'll notice that when we first see him, he's muttering under his breath. He's stooped over his desk. So if he's got a hunched back, he's leaning over, sort of tight over his desk. He's got a candle lit desktop. He's in dark gray muted clothing. I don't know if that's significant of anything at the moment, but it might be. He's also got a hat on his head, so I've called a nightcap. It could be because it's evening, because it's cold, or it could be part of his uniform that he's sort of given himself. There might be a significance, there might not be. 
And also it's important to notice that he's got a smart appearance. There could be a reason for that, again, because he's taking his job seriously. Um, but it might just be his favourite evening. And he's also using ink to write with. He's got no pencil, no pen. We notice there's an ink well there. So that could give us an indication of time period for the story. It might just be his preferred method of writing. And he also looks like he's writing a letter. If we then think about the setting, you notice in the beginning that there's a full moon and there's wisps of cloud across the moon. So it tells us sort of a cloudy night, which might indicate significance of a storm. Uh, and then we notice the rough waves. We can hear roaring winds, which would also fit with the storm. It's early evening, it's not midnight, you've still got people awake, um, but it is dark, so it's after sunset. And bearing in mind he's a lighthouse keeper in a lighthouse, it would sort of be evening time. We then notice there's a quaint occupied village. It's a little bit removed from the lighthouse, but there's quite a few people in it, and we can we know that from seeing the people in the shadows in the window. You then scan back to the lighthouse tower, which again is a little bit of a distance away from the village. It's lonely and it's isolated. It's got whitewashed bricks. There's bright beams of light coming out the top of the tower. And we notice there's also a solitary window light on the tower. This says that the lighthouse is otherwise unoccupied. Um, and you can also hear raucous cheering. You can hear it through his window and you can also hear it as you scan through the village. So I'm going to give you a writing hint. It's important to remember that whilst we're writing the story from the video and we're retelling it as a story, um, but also because of that, we can add in extra details that aren't shown in the video clip. For example, in any internal monologue or thoughts from characters are really hard to show on video. So we can add extra details into our writing to help engage the reader further in your whole story. And that's worthwhile remembering as you're writing. It might be something that you want to do. As long as you keep the general gist of the story plot the same, that's the events, key events that happen in the story, that should work. And I'm going to show an example on the next page. So my waggle, what a good one looks like, of my possible opening paragraph. I recall an old fisherman's rhyme told to me by my father when I was just a lad. If clouds are gathering thick and fast, Keep sharp look out for sail and mast. If the wind is blowing in the north, no fisherman should dare set forth. He'd been a fisherman since he was old enough to cast a net and had always believed it to be true, refusing to launch his boat if a north wind was blowing, much to my mother's annoyance. However, I realise now, some forty years later, that perhaps there was some truth in his theory, because it was an icy north wind that blew on that fateful night in December. A night I won't forget in a hurry. Heavy, ragged clouds obscured the moon from time to time in a tumultuous grip and the sea was a restless beast, chewing at the rocks below the lighthouse. I watched the horizon for longer than usual, scouring the inky darkness of ships with my father's rhyme playing over and over in my mind, and then eventually I decided to retire to my books and letter writing. Writing Hint by giving an insight into the lighthouse keeper, we're providing some of his background information, which helps the reader to build a relationship with him as he's the main character. And that's the point. We, um, it's important and we want the readers to care about characters in the story or they won't want to read on. So adding a bit of background information can help to build that relationship between the reader and the author and the main characters. It also allows us as writers to use varied forms of past tense verbs in our writing to show what we know of the English language. Your task today is to write your opening paragraph, weaving information about the lighthouse keeper and his past with information about the setting. I'd also like you to include at least one sentence with a relative clause. If you've forgotten how to do this, please look back at Lesson 1 PowerPoint if you need a reminder. I want you to also think about using synonyms to show your range of working vocabulary and maintain the reader interest. It's really boring reading a story when you've got the same word being used again and again. So perhaps a thesaurus to hand or use your internet browser to search words for synonyms. A healthy note is here that be careful with the words that you choose because synonyms have a similar meaning, 
not necessarily an exact meaning and therefore if you choose the wrong word it might be strange in your sentence so if you're not sure check it up in a dictionary first also it will allow us to um, use varied past tense verb forms when we are sharing information about the lighthouse keeper's past so how can you weave together information about the lighthouse keeper and his past with information about the setting one way you could do this is to generate some sentences so you can use your initial points of things that you noticed in the video and turn them into sentences and then combine them together in, a, in a, any order you like that you think has the best impact and to create your paragraph you can also think of additional information so about the lighthouse keepers past and use those to string together to create your paragraph with some of your other ideas so I've thought about additional ideas and I've come up with some for you here. So the pink shows the lighthouse keeper. So my two examples are, I was always fond of the sea and would spend hours as a child on the beach collecting shells and staring at the waves. Walks as a child were rare because of the high tides and dangerous currents in the sea. And then about the setting, the rocks below the lighthouse were perilous and constantly gnawed by waves. Perilous meaning dangerous and gnawed by waves is an indication of personification. And then the second one, the peace and tranquility of the sea can change at any minute. When I combine these together, I would get something along the lines of, I was always fond of the sea and would spend hours as a child out on the beach collecting shells and staring at the waves. Though I learned as an adult that the peace and tranquility of the sea could change at any moment. The rocks beneath the lighthouse were perilous and constantly gnawed at by the waves and the walks I'd had as a child were rare because of the high tides and dangerous currents. So just a reminder, your task today is to write your opening paragraph, weaving information about the lighthouse keeper and his past with information about the setting, because that's the purpose of the opening, is to describe the setting and introduce your main character. Also, to include at least one sentence with a relative clause. And again, if you can't remember what one of those is, please see Lesson 1 PowerPoint if you need the reminder. Remembering about synonyms, showing variants of word choices in your writing, and to maintain the reader interest. And also using varied past tense verb forms. So when you're ready, you can go back and have a look at my models if you need to, or you can pause the presentation and have a go on your own. Good luck. Once you've completed your writing, I'd like you to read your final paragraph out loud to yourself or to a parent, just to check that it makes sense to the audience. This is really important because when you write, you often write what you think you've written or read what you think you've written as opposed to what you've actually written. So if, you, if you're doing it recently after you've written something, you read it back and you read what you think is there. So you have to look really carefully to make sure that you're actually reading what you've put down just to check that it makes sense. So sometimes it's a good idea to leave a day in between before you do this, just so you can check that you're really reading what you've put as opposed to what you think is in your head. And as you're reading it, you can make any changes as necessary when you notice them. So you can edit and improve your writing at the same time. This is a really important process in the writing process because no writer writes perfectly one time and there's an always an editing process that they go through. Okay, so that's perfectly normal. Good luck. Once you've finished, have a look at your reflection and our objectives and have a think about how successful you were at writing your opening paragraph to your narrative. Did you manage to include description of setting in your opening? And did you combine it with information about the life of the character in the opening paragraph?